Okay, everyone, here are some proofs for the area of a triangle. You can see I have a rectangle here in the rectangle. I've identified my length and my width, or I can say this is the base and the height. Now, with this base and height, I have a full area, everything inside here. Um, if I decide to cut this in half, you can see on my line here where I cut it in half. Has my area changed? Well, I still have the full area, but now I have two parts. Well, when I have two parts, what I can do is with this part is I can rotate it. Am I changing the area at all? Nope, I'm not changing the area. I'm just moving it. So I've rotated it to have two triangles. And when I put them together, you can see that those two triangles are, well, my cutting job wasn't very good, but those two triangles are of two equal parts. Well, if I have one hole and I split it into two equal parts, that means I've cut it in half. I have half of my rectangle. So here's my full rectangle. I take half of it and I have a triangle. Now remember, this is a right angle triangle. It's a right angle triangle because it contains one right angle. And that's at the corner. And this is really important to remember that the base and height of a rectangle always meet at the corner. And so the base and height of a rectangle is always at 90 degrees. And for a triangle as well, because the base and height of the triangle is the same as the base and height of a rectangle. So that means the base and height of a triangle will always be at perpendicular to each other. That means they will always meet at 90 degrees. So make sure we remember that one for our other types of triangles, okay? The base and height has to be 90 degrees from each other. And that's because it's the base and height is the corner of the rectangle. All right, well, I'll catch you in the next one.